Long, long ago, there dwelt in the mountains a terrible ogress, a woman monster whose food was human livers. She could take on any shape or appearance to suit her purpose, but in her right form, she looked very much like an old woman, except that her whole body was covered with skin as hard as a rock that no weapon could wound or penetrate, and that on her right hand she had a long, stony forefinger of bone, like a spearhead, with which she stabbed everyone to whom she could get near enough. On account of this fact, she was called Spearfinger, and on account of her stony skin, she was sometimes called Stone Dress. There was another stone-clothed monster that killed people, but that is a different story. Spearfinger had such powers over stone that she could easily lift and carry immense rocks and could cement them together by merely striking one against another. To get over the rough country more easily, she undertook to build a great rock bridge through the air from the tree rock on Hawassi over to Whiteside Mountain on the Blue Ridge and had it well started from the top of the tree rock when the lightning struck it and scattered the fragments across the whole ridge where the pieces can still be seen by those who go there. She used to range all over the mountains about the heads of the streams and the dark passes of Nantahala, always hungry and looking for victims. Her favorite haunt on the Tennessee side was the gap on the trail where Chihaue Mountain comes down to the river. Sometimes an old woman would approach along the trail where the children were picking strawberries or playing near a village and would say to them coaxingly, Come, my grandchildren, come to your granny and let granny dress your hair. When some little girl ran up and laid her head in the old woman's lap to be petted and combed, the old witch would gently run her fingers through the child's hair until it went to sleep, when she would stab the little one through the heart or the back of the neck with the long spear finger, which she had kept hidden under her robe. Then she would take out the liver and eat it. She would enter a house by taking the appearance of one of the family who had happened to have gone out for a short time and would watch her chance to stab someone with her long finger and take out their liver. She could stab them without being noticed and often the victim did not even know it at the time for it left no wound and caused no pain. Then it went on about his own affairs until at once the victim fell weak and began to gradually pine away and was always sure to die because Spearfinger had taken their liver. When the Cherokee went out in the fall, according to their custom, to burn the leaves off from the mountains in order to get the chestnuts on the ground, they were never safe, for the old witch was always on the lookout, and as soon as she saw the smoke rise, she knew there were Indians there, and she would sneak up to try to surprise one alone. So as well as they could, they tried to keep together and were very cautious of allowing any stranger to approach the camp. But if one went down to the spring for a drink, they never knew but it might be the liver eater that came back and sat with them. Sometimes she took her proper form, and once or twice, when far out from the settlements, a solitary hunter had seen an old woman with a weird looking hand going through the woods singing low to herself, Liver, I eat it. It was rather a pretty song, but it chilled their blood, for they knew it was the liver eater, and they hurried away silently before she might see them. At last, a great council was held to devise some means to get rid of Spearfinger before she could destroy everybody. The people came from all around, and after much talk, it was decided that the best way to be trap her in a pitfall where all the warriors could attack her at once. So they dug a deep pitfall across the trail and covered it over with earth and grass as if the ground had never been disturbed. Then they kindled a large fire of brush near the trail and hid in the laurels because they knew she would come as soon as she saw the smoke. Sure enough, they soon saw an old woman coming along the trail. She looked like an old woman whom they knew in, in their village. And although several of the wiser men wanted to shoot at her, the others interfered, 
because they did not want to hurt one of their own people. The old woman came slowly along the trail with one hand under her blanket until she stepped upon the pitfall and tumbled through the brush top into the deep hole below. Then at once she showed her true nature and instead of a feeble old woman there was the terrible spear finger with her stony skin and her sharp finger reaching out in every direction for someone to stab. The hunters rushed out from the thicket and surrounded the pit, but shoot as true and as often as they could, their arrows struck the stony mail of the witch, only to be broken and fall useless at her feet, while she taunted them and tried to climb out of the pit to get at them. They kept out of her way, but were only wasting their arrows when a small bird the titmouse perched on a tree overhead and began to sing. They thought it was singing heart, meaning they should aim at the heart of the stone witch. They directed their arrows where the heart should be, but the arrows only glanced off with the flint heads broken. Then they caught the titmouse and cut off its tongue, so that ever since its tongue is short and everybody knows it is a liar. When the hunters let it go, it flew straight up into the sky until it was out of sight and never came back again. The titmouse that we know now is only an image of the other. They kept up the fight without result until another bird, the chickadee, flew down from a tree and alighted upon the witch's right hand. The warriors took this as a sign that they must aim there, and they were right for her heart was on the inside of her hand, which she kept doubled into a fist, this same hand with which she stabbed so many people. Now she was frightened in earnest and began to rush furiously at them with her long spear finger and to jump about in the pit to dodge the arrows until at last a lucky arrow struck just where the all joined with her wrist and she fell down dead. Ever since the chickadee is known as the truth teller, and when a man is away on a journey, if the chickadee comes and perches near the house and chirps its song, his friends know he will soon be safe home. <laughs>